This is the Louis T Network. The Red Skins Report. Welcome all my fellow Redskin brethren and sistren. I am your man and resident Redskins fan, Lou. Thank you for joining me here on Victory Monday on the Red Skins Report. That was a tough one and I expected it to be, but I also expected us to come away with the victory. That's a really good San Diego Chargers football team that we just beat. And like I said, we're back on the road to recovery, but until we get back to 500, everything we're doing right now means absolutely nothing. So we have to continue on the path that we're on. Got to find a way to string together consecutive victories. Haven't been able to do that all season long. It's win one, lose two, win one, lose one, win one, lose one. Now we got to find a way to win a game and win another game and win another game and start to string these victories together. But before you can win two, you got to win one. That was the objective yesterday. Get a win in a tough environment at home versus a really good offense. Phillip Rivers is having a career year. This is proof that our defense is getting better, and I felt like they are getting better, and I felt like they'd be able to do some things. I didn't know how well they would perform, but they're starting to, to mature right in front of our eyes. They're starting to get it, and the young guys are starting to grow up, and that's good. There's still some things we need to work on, however, but let's get to the breakdown. It's a, a lengthy one, as you could imagine. We had some bonus coverage, some overtime action, so I don't want to keep you here that much longer than I really need to. So let's get to the action and I'll give you some extra things that I was thinking as I was watching the game as I get to those events in the game. So let's go ahead and break this thing on down. Four and three San Diego Chargers coming out to FedEx Field to take on the two and five Redskins. And if you notice, I got on a throwback today. Not the one that we wore yesterday, but I got a throwback on, but I have a, a regular Redskins hat on on purpose to kind of mock what the NFL made us do with the red burgundy helmets, but the actual dark, dark burgundy throwbacks, it did not match. Look, I still like the throwback, but I would have preferred the helmets that we wore last year. But look, we won this time. We lost last year with the other helmets. So whatever you got to do to get a W, I'm on board. Sign me up. So uh, this is my ode to the outfit that we had on yesterday. But let's get started. First quarter. We got the ball after the half. You know how that makes me feel. I'm a happy, happy man when we're getting the football after the halftime break. So Chargers come out first. And I wanted to see how this defense would establish themselves against Phillip Rivers in this high-octane offense. San Diego gets the ball first and get right to work. Rivers to Woodhead, then to Brown, and they're at midfield. After about two plays, a couple of plays, maybe a run in there with uh, their running back might be sprinkled in but, I mean, they got right to work. I think they sprinkled in a Ryan Matthews running there somewhere. But, I mean, it was two plays, bing, bang, boom, there at midfield. And I'm like, oh, man, this, that didn't take long. But a penalty on Antonio Gates, he had a false start, kind of really thwarted their drive. They tried to run on second down. It did not work. Then they had to throw a couple of passes. We were able to get off the field on third and long and get the football. Mike Cyphers is one of the better punters in the league, especially when coming – down to pinning teams deep inside their own territory. Well, he pinned us at the one-yard line. It was great special teams on their part to get down there, stop the ball from getting in the end zone, and down it. So we're starting deep in our own territory, shadow of our end zone. And, you know, we don't perform well when we're backed up like that. Last year, we used to excel at that. I mean, because I, I know this, and I feel like other teams playing against us should know that on first down, from our own one-yard line, from our own two, from our three, if, if Robert drops back to pass or if Robert's under, under center, we're not running the football. We never do. It's always play-action fake with a, a little shallow post behind it that's supposed to pick up about 10 or 12 yards, get us out of the end zone, and give us some space to work with. We tried that on first down. Robert got a little bit of pressure, skipped the ball to Pierre, it wasn't a completion. So, again, I know how that goes. I'm thinking the Chargers should know that. I'm thinking teams that play against us should know. That's a tendency of ours. We need to start. 
making sure we switch it up or at least switch up the route if you're going to throw it run something else because if I'm a team I'm dropping that linebacker right back into the middle of the field to take that away and force us to do something else Jay Reed big third down catch Jay Reed then an 18 yard option run so we get out of our own end zone we get out of the shadow of our own end zone Jay Reed coming up big as he usually does with a huge catch to move us out of our own end zone on third down. And that would have, that's huge because if we would have had to punt there with the misfortunes of our special teams and not, us not being able to pick up a first down, it would have been a tough punt, number one. Number two, he probably wouldn't have been able to get off a good punt because he would have been just trying to get it off in the first place. So they would have had great field position if not for that first down. So that was a huge catch by Jay Reed. Great throw by Robert. Then we run the option, the triple option, and we flick it over to Santana. He picks up a nice 18-yard chunk, so we start moving the football. Then Pierre Garçon for a 30-yard gain on the bootleg, and this is something that I screamed about last week. Hey, run the bootleg. Move the pocket. It seems like when we do things that keep Robert out of one area, we ran option, triple option, we ran the bootleg. When we move the pocket around, when we move Robert around, when he's a threat to run, when we're running bootleg, when you don't know where he's going to be from play to play, it's hard for the opposing team to get a beat on him and sack him. Notice he didn't get sacked in this game against the Chargers, and a lot of that had to do with the fact that we were moving the pocket around and not keeping him stationary behind the center. So this first drive kind of set the tone for all of that. So we go from at our own one-yard line to – out to midfield now after a Jay Reed catch option and a 30-yard pass to Garcon. We're moving the football. Jay Reed for 14 on third and 11. Jay Reed! We're moving the ball. Lumberjack for another seven sets up third and four. Now, and, and we get a uh, first down, excuse me, on that pass to Lumberjack as we pick it up on third and four. So we're moving the ball and we're converting on third downs. I like to see that because we're a team that have struggled this season on third downs and converting and moving the ball and sustaining offense. So on this opening possession, we're moving the football, picking up first downs on third down. And so Lumberjack, Logan Paulson getting involved in the action, picking up a first down. Now it's Paul for six on a bootleg, sets up third and four. And this is the, the area of the field that we have to be better at. That fringe area, you're inside the red zone, okay? So you're about at the 11-yard line or so, but you're not quite at first and goal. So this is where we need to be better at, third and four from about the 11-yard line. And we're looking to run the quarterback draw here. And we don't run it often, which is good because when it comes, teams aren't expecting it. And we had the Chargers on this one. We had the Chargers right where we wanted them, third and four, run the quarterback draw. And Tyler Columbus is absolutely blown up on the QB draw by Larry English. Leads to a blocked field goal, no points, on a 15-play, 93-yard, 9-minute drive. That's the epitome of frustration there. I mean, you can't put together a drive that's better than that unless you get a touchdown, which we didn't, because Tyler Columbus, and at some point we have to address right tackle. Uh, right now is not the time. I'm not going to sit here and harp on Tyler Columbus not getting it done. But at some point, we have to upgrade that position. I don't know if that guy's Tom straight out of Compton or not. He was in the game quite a bit as that extra tackle when we were looking to beef up our, our run blocking. But at some point, we have to fix that right tackle position. I'm tired of guys blowing up Tyler Columbus and getting to the quarterback. This was a perfectly called quarterback draw. He gets blown up four yards into the backfield, and Larry English is able to shoestring tackle Robert before he gets going because there was a lane there and he might have scored I don't know he was definitely going to pick up the first down either way so that drive gets stopped then we have to settle for a field goal and it ends up getting blocked our special teams bites us in the rear end again so a frustrating start look positive start to the game but frustrating nonetheless because you do all of that 15 plays 93 yards nine minutes of the first quarter clock and you have nothing, absolutely zero, to show for it. That's disappointing. And that's as disappointing as it can get. The only thing that would be worse is to turn it over and directly give up points. And so it's still 0-0. Zero, zero. 
you're still at a level playing field, but you feel like you've done enough to at least be leading in this football game. So a little disappointing there. So we move on to the second quarter. After a long drive, Kerrigan gets pressure, forces incomplete pass, and a punt pinned at the one-yard line again by Mike Cypher. So the Chargers put together a nice little drive because, remember, we moved the football. They blocked the punt. They get the ball where the punt was blocked. So they had a, a nice lengthy drive to uh, put forth themselves. And so they moved the ball down the field. But their drive stalled out right around that fringe area between kicking a long field goal and having to punt. They decided to punt. And so Kerrigan got pressure one of the few times that we actually got to Phillip Rivers. And he pushed the tackle into him, forced a lob job. It hits Perry Riley in the back of the helmet. It's incomplete. They got to punt the football. Mike Cyphers does it again. This time, he doesn't need the help of any of his teammates. He kicks the ball. Coffin kicks it out of bounds at the one-yard line this time. We had to pay for it uh, on the second play from scrimmage. And they were batting a lot of our balls down this game. A lot of balls were being tipped. It was starting to become a little bit off-putting. I was getting nervous because, again, anytime the ball is batted in the air, normally bad things happen. Good doesn't come of passes being batted down. So this time it bit us in the took us. Touchdown by San Diego on the interception on the end zone. Robert dropping back in our own end zone looking to pass. Ball is batted down. And the same guy that got us, Guy is his last name, same guy that got us on the field goal block got us on the touchdown. He batted the ball, and it's perfect timing. I mean, you see Robert staring down a receiver. He's ready to let it go. You're not getting to the quarterback. Get your hands up. You're always taught that. Guy gets his hands up in the air, bats the ball down, and goes straight to Sean Lismore in the end zone. And look, he got a gift. It's that, that time of the year. It's the giving season, and he got a gift. And that was the gift that, unfortunately for us, keeps on giving. That ball batted in the air, straight to Sean Lismore. It's a touchdown. It's 7-0 San Diego. And again, I hate when the defense has done nothing wrong, yet they're trailing in the football game. Seems to happen to us all too often where the defense is having to try to clean up some mistake that special teams has made or some mistake that the offense has made. Even though they haven't done anything wrong, they're trailing 7 nothing in the football game. So the only good thing that came of that turnover is that we got better field position, kicked the football off. But there's better ways to, of going about getting better field position than giving up a touchdown to do so. So three and out on pass to Aldrick Robinson short of the sticks. And, and on that particular pla pass, uh, on that particular play, actually, as he was dropping back, the pressure around him started to go around him, and there was a lane right in front of him to step up and run. And I wanted him to run! You know how I am. If it's not there, run! Don't, don't just stand there. Run! And instead of him taking off and going, I thought he could have gotten six or seven yards in the first down. It was about third and four. Instead of him taking off and getting the first down like he would have done last year. He decided to, to try to get it to Aldrick Robinson. A, the pass was low, so even if Aldrick had a chance to catch it, which he did, he didn't have a chance to run after the catch. And two, it was, it was some solid coverage. I mean, the, the defender was right there. If Aldrick had caught this one standing up, I think he would have been tackled short of the sticks anyway. Aldrick has to get more depth on his route and run it past the sticks so that if he catches it, it's a first down. And if he would have ran the the right depth on the route. I don't think it would have got to him because Robert threw the ball low anyway and he had to go dig it up. So who's to say? I don't know what the situation would have been if he would have ran the right depth of route, but it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, get the first down. And if you're best suited to do that with using your legs, then use your legs. He decided to throw it short of the sticks. We have to punt the football. So now I'm getting a little nervous because Chargers are up 7-0. They've moved the football. They just haven't gotten any points because of it. And now we're, pun we're punting them the football a little bit nervous about our defense being able to continue to hold up Phillip Rivers and his San Diego Chargers high-octane offense. So I, we need to do something. So pick by EJ Biggers, and we needed that because, again, at this point in the game, no momentum, haven't scored any points yet. Chargers have a lead. We want to try to get something, get back into this game. And, again, you're only down 7 nothing. You no need to panic, but when you're a 2-5 and five football team, the other team has a lead on you. We, we've seen this team panic being down seven this season. 
and, and abandon the run. So just imagine if San Diego goes down and gets a touchdown or goes down and gets a field goal and they take a 10-point lead. Hell, we might not run the ball again in the rest of the football game. So I really wanted to be able to, you know, stop the bleeding a little bit. Picked by E.J. Biggers. After the play, personal foul on D'Angelo Hall, that was a little bit disappointing because, again, that pick was returned out to the 48-yard line right around midfield. And instead of us having great field position, we've been in terrible field position all game long. This would have been the first time we really could say, hey, we've got great field position. D'Angelo Hall gets the personal foul after the play. He's got his hand all up in the guy's face mask. I'm like, D'Angelo, stop it. Go, and, go back to the sideline. What are you doing? And I was hoping it was offsetting penalties. It wasn't. So 15 on us, back to the 33-yard line. Even though that's still really solid field position, it's not as good as the 48-yard line. So I was really, really disappointed with his decision to pick up a personal foul. They've got to be smarter. And it was so unnecessary. If you would have saw what prompted him to get angry, you would have been like, come on, D'Angelo. you got to be better than that, man. So then a big game to Hank. Personal foul face mask, then a 24-yard game by A.M. down to the 5. A.M. into the end zone on a touchdown run. We're knotted at 7, so we get a big game to Hank. He showed up well in this game, didn't drop the football. It was huge in a couple of catches, so good to see Hank starting to assimilate himself into this offense and starting to... He, he really needs to separate himself as that second receiver on this football team. I feel like Jordan Reed is the second option behind Pierre Garçon, but... As a receiver, as that's concerned, we, we really need Hank to step up. It needs to be Hank time more often on the football field, and he, he got involved in this game. Personal foul face mask on an Alfred Morris run. Nets us a nice little chunk of yardage, 24 by AM down to the 5, and then he finishes off his own drive this time, getting into the end zone. We're tied at 7, so... Feels good to be tied at seven. Again, don't want to see the Chargers run away from us in this game at all. Want to keep it close so that we can stick to the game plan. That's been a problem in D.C. this year, sticking to the game plan and sticking to what works so that we can win the football game. If we get to run the football, if we get to run Washington Redskins football, we play good football, we usually win the game. When we get away from the game plan, when we start throwing it, when there's an imbalance between pass and run, that's when we get in trouble. That's when we start losing football games. So we're back to 7-7. Seven, seven. It's basically a neutral game at this point. Now we can stick to what we know will get us a win in this football game. Merriweather with a big hit on Woodhead. And he, he talked about having to go low. He went low on that play. I hate to see guys go low. You know how I feel about that. But if that's what he feels like he has to do to not get fined, to not be suspended, knock yourself out. Beautiful spin by Brandon Jenkins on third down. Big Rivers conversion. And Phillip Rivers, was he was absolutely killing me on, on this game. And I said, come on, guy. This is Phillip Rivers. Two left feet we're talking about here. Two left feet Rivers. All right. We kept collapsing the pocket around him. But he had space to step up. And I don't know how he kept getting away. I, I, I just kept waiting for somebody to reach out, grab him by the back of his jersey, say, oh, oh no, you don't, Philip. You're not going anywhere, buddy. And Philip was looking for somebody to grab him. And nobody, he, he always ran like, okay, somebody's going to grab me now. And nobody grabbed me. Either. Oh, I got free. And he'd shake free and he'd find somebody down the field or he'd scamper for a little four or five yard game. It was so frustrating because you're right there. You got him. You're getting pressure, and you're not grabbing him. You're not corralling him. He kept getting out of these tight spaces, and I didn't know how because Phillip Rivers does not escape. He gets sacked. They, they read off a stat, something like he's been sacked in you know, 30 consecutive games or something like that because he's Phillip Rivers, and he can't run. He's not a mobile quarterback, and we couldn't get to him. So what does that say about our pass rush? Oh, I, I, he was killing me, but he got away and completes a big pass on third down, and, and it, it was frustrating. It, it was really starting to eat at me because you're this close to getting off the field on third down, and then Phillip Rivers slithers through and gets away and completes the football. And, and I felt like we had opportunities, but Brandon Jenkins, I need to see more of this guy. That spin move that he put on, he didn't get to Phillip Rivers. But the reason he didn't get to him was because he spun inside, and as he got away, Rivers got to the outside and found someone to throw the football to, but he got away, and it was a beautiful spin, and nobody on our team uses spin moves. To see Brandon Jenkins 
pull out the spin and put somebody in the spin cycle and it actually work. You should have seen how excited I was. For a play that didn't result in a sack, you would have thought we got a sack, forced fumble, and scored a touchdown on it. I was so excited to see Brandon Jenkins use the, the spin and get to the quarterback. So, man, that was exciting. I need to see more Brandon Jenkins. Good to see him healthy enough and actually be activated and given a chance to get in the game. So I look forward to seeing him. When, when the coaches see him use that spin move and see the pressure that he applied on that play, I think he'll get more snaps. I'm, I'm anxious to see what Brandon Jenkins can bring to this football team because we need to get more pressure. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But Bad tackling on a woodhead screen leads to a first down. Eddie Royal wide receiver screen for a 15-yard touchdown is 14-7. Rivers was 8 of 9 for 87 yards on that drive. He absolutely carved us up. And that goes back to the play where we had an opportunity to sack him. He gets through the line, finds a way. And he was like a magician on this drive. I mean, if they were open, he got it to him. He carved us up. Eight of nine for 87 yards. You can't do it much better than that on a particular drive. He was money. Caps it off with a 15-yard screen to Eddie Royal. Great blocking. DJ Fluker gets out there and absolutely flattens our defensive back Josh Wilson and, and paves the way for him. It was great blocking by the receivers on that play. And not much you can do there. I mean, they really executed that play. It's 14 to 7 right before the half. So, you know, a little frustrating. Again, I felt like we've done more than enough to be winning in this football game, but the Chargers are up 14 to 7. So, I really don't think we've got that much time to really do anything, but I wanted to see how we were going to approach being down 14 to 7. Were we going to try to get something before the half? Or just take our 14-7 deficit knowing we get the ball after the half and just go with that. Two deflections and a long run. Garcon catch leads to a 59-yard field goal attempt that's blocked. It's 14-7 at the half. So we tried to make something of it. It didn't work. I, you know, I got nervous after the two deflections. I'm like, no, just, just go to halftime. Halu bust off a nice chunk. And then I'm like, hey, call the timeout. So my attitude changed on, on one play. Essentially, after two deflections, I didn't want them to get the football back with a chance to try to get more points. And then Roy Hallou rips off about a 23-yard run, gives us an opportunity to try to do something. Garcon has a catch, but 59 yards. Even if Kai would have got this thing up high enough, he wouldn't have made it. That's too far. That's not in his range. So it was blocked. We go to the half down 14-7. But I just wanted to take a look at this real quick, and then we'll move on. What this score would have been last season. When we were on our seven-game winning streak, the score in this game at this current juncture would have been 10-0. Instead of, and 10 nothing us instead of 14-7 San Diego. And, and the reason I say that is because, A, we would have either scored a touchdown on that possession that was 15 plays, 93 yards, 9 minutes. We either score a touchdown there or we at least convert the field goal. And so easily, this could have been a 14 to nothing game or 10 nothing. I like to think it would have been 10. Um, because if the quarterback draw didn't work, it didn't work. So, and that was just simply blocking. That was Tyler Columbus being blown up. So I think we would have got a field goal there. And then I think we wouldn't have had the touchdown for the Chargers. We wouldn't have had it last year. We didn't turn the football over. And that's the difference right now is we're still making mistakes. That's making it tough on us to win football games. And so instead of us being up 10-0 or 10-3 or 10-7 or, or at the half, we're down 14-7 because we're making mistakes. And two block field goals, a touchdown on the defensive side for the Chargers, a team that came into the game with only four takeaways and no defensive touchdowns. They get both on one play against us. Again, that's something that we have to clean up. Stop giving the football away. And we got to start generating takeaways of our own. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but it's 14-7. to 7. Forget about what would have been last year. Let's talk about what it is this year. 14-7 Chargers at the half. So we go to the third quarter. AM starts off second half with a 10-yard gain. And so that's a good omen. If you can start the half off with the first play being a 10-yard rush, that's always a good sign for us. Great catch by Garcon on third and 12. And they caught... Pass interference anyway to gain the 32. Huge catch. And Pierre was money in this game. I'll talk about him a little bit later. Option to Moss for 18 down to the four-yard line. So we're in business. We're moving the football. 
after AM run to the two, Paulson to the half yard line. Logan's got to allow that ball to travel some more and, and catch that in the end zone. He stuck his hands out. You know, Logan's a hands catcher. Lumberjack catches it with his hands, and I don't have a problem with that. That's why he didn't drop the football that often because he catches it with his hands. But if he allows that football to travel just another half yard to his body, it's a touchdown instead of him reaching out, snagging it, which is what he always does. I can't be mad at the man for doing what he normally does. But this time it cost us a touchdown. Ball's down at the half yard line because he didn't travel all the way into the end zone. His body was in the end zone, but his hands were extended outside the end zone. Nice tackle by the Charger defender to keep him out of the end zone. So now it's third and inches from the half yard line. Got to find a way in the end zone. Cannot settle for a field goal. And I think that if we would have been stopped on third and inches, Mike would have went for it just because of the state of the, the team right now and what touchdowns would mean for us. I think he would have went for it anyway, but no need for all of that. D.Y. gets into the end zone on the fullback dive. It's knotted up at 14, so great opening drive. This is why I love getting the football after the half because if the Chargers get the football – after the half, up 14-7. And it's them, not us, going on this scoring drive. Now we're down two scores. Instead, we get the ball after the half, and we go down and tie the game up. Changes the complexion of the football game. So we won the toss. We elected to defer. This is the benefit that you reap from electing to defer the football till the second half. So now it's knotted up at 14. Great tackle by Bakari Rambo on special teams. And you cannot discount what it means to this special teams unit to get down there, get a tackle, and force the other team to have to go 85 yards for a touchdown. Our special teams unit hasn't been the greatest this year. Good to see guys running down. And we were great in this game on covering kickoffs. Good to see the special teams unit starting to get down there and play with intensity. After a couple of first downs, Batted ball and pressure forces San Diego to punt the football. So they tried to start moving the football. We got a couple of balls batted down. Bowen got in on it, and, and then we were able to generate a little bit of pressure, make Phillip Rivers uncomfortable. We forced a punt. Garcon for 32 on first down to kickstart the drive. Robert for 10 on third and nine. And this was one of those plays you hold your breath as a Redskins fan. Third and nine, you want him to be aggressive. You want him to pick up the first down. And he's already told us this much. Hey, I'm going to be aggressive when the time calls for it. Well, this was one of those situations where, look, we got the momentum. We're moving the football. You don't want to punt. You, you have a chance to extend the drive, do whatever you got to do. You hate him putting himself in harm's way, but at the end of the day, if he can get up after the play and pick up a first down, hey, do what you got to do, man. So he goes up, and he flies in the air. And I said, ah! Boom, he hits his back, and I, ah, get up, and he got up. He was a little, he was a little gimpy, but he wasn't going to show the Chargers that they had gotten the best of him, but trust me, that hurt. He fell flat on his back, and he folded up like an accordion, but he got up, and more importantly, he got the first down, so he's okay. We got the first down. That lifts the spirits up of everybody in the building, the crowd, the players, Everybody's excited. Trent Williams came over, slapped him on the helmet. He was hyped. So that kind of play gets everybody excited and gets everybody pumped up. And so I knew we were going to get some points out of that possession after Robert sold his body out for the first down. Offsides on San Diego, Hank for nine, and Skins are in business after the Robert, uh, I believe I can fly moment. So Third and one, delay of game makes it third and six. We have to stop with the penalties, okay? We can't have delay of game on third and one. That's what you strive to put yourself in, third and short, third and manageable. You have so many options available to you when it's third and one. You can run it. You can fake the run, go up top. You can do so many different things. You can go bootleg and get something quick that turns into a big game. But when you go to third and six, now that playbook shrinks. Now you're, you're basically relegated to having to take to the air to pick up the first down. That was frustrating. So we call a timeout after the delay of game because we're about to get another delay of game, which is frustrating because in the second half, you cannot waste timeouts. Those timeouts are precious. You have to really take care of your timeouts in the second half. You want to waste a timeout in the first half? Go ahead. Be my guest. In the second half, you cannot do it. 
So that one was very, very off-putting. I was very perturbed by that timeout, but we had to call it because another delay of game would have put us at third and 11. And after this drive had, ex had been executed so beautifully, you cannot come out of this drive with nothing. So after the timeout, big throw to Hank for 11 on third and six yields us a first down. That takes us to the fourth quarter. So we're moving the football as the end of the third quarter hits. We're moving into the fourth quarter. We're on the move to try to take the lead in a 14 to 14 ball game. So now, we finally get into the end zone, D.Y. on his second touchdown of the day, on the second play of the fourth quarter, gets into the end zone. We're up 21 to 14. That was an 11 play, 79 yard, eight minute drive that we just went on, a thing of beauty. Robert takes to the air, we run the football, there's balance. We picked up a couple of crucial third downs. We're doing all of the things that winning teams do in the National Football League. And the most important part is we're capping off drives with sevens, not threes. So you want to win in this league, score touchdowns, not field goals. You know my motto, touchdowns wins games. Field goals do not. Field goals don't win games. Touchdowns do. So good to see us getting on the board in the form of a touchdown. We're up seven. Huge drop by Keenan Allen on third down forces a Chargers punt. He was wide open on this play. And I think this was a simple case of trying to run before you catch the football. Again, you can't run and have fun without the ball. You can't have a ball without the ball. Keenan Allen drops it. We catch a huge break because he was wide open on the play. So Robert misses Tanner on play action fake wide open over the middle leads to a three and out. And I think that was the football gods kind of evening out the, the playing field on this one because Keenan Allen should have caught the ball. He didn't. Wow. And look, this was our chance to run away with this game. And, and this is something that we've struggled with this season, having an opportunity to put teams away and then not converting on third downs, giving the other team the football back and having them score and stay in the football game. We had opportunities to put Chicago out of the game. We didn't. We had opportunities to run away with other games this season, like the Raiders game. We didn't. And so we've got to be better at putting teams away when we've got them on the ropes. And this was an, a perfect example of that. Robert has a wide open Santana on a post route, and there's not a Charger defender in sight. I don't know what happened on that play, but Tanner Man was open. And, and Robert just airmails it over his head and who knows what Tanner does on that. That could easily have been a 73-yard touchdown. But it, Robert still has some things to iron out. He was, he was extremely solid in this game, but he did miss a couple of throws. But you won't hear me complain because when we needed big throws in this game, Robert made them. And he got bailed out by a couple of huge catches by Pierre, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. But we punt the ball and this is one of those times where I'm, I'm thinking Philip Rivers is about to make us pay for that lack of execution on the previous drive. They start to move the ball. And just when I thought that they were going to try to do something, the Rook steps up. DA undercuts a route and picks off Philip Rivers, leads to a 47-yard Kai four bath field goal. It's 24 to 14. So David Emerson, DA steps up. And, and this is what you need some of these young guys to do start stepping up and making their presence felt and da has some picks and we know he has ability to make plays in this league he's a guy that is a playmaker he giveth he taketh away though we'll talk about da a lot later but i tell you what for this play in particular great play that's the nfl cornerback play right there to be right there undercut the route and run the route for the receiver take the football can't do it much better than that so da makes a huge play I was proud of the Rook. It led to a field goal by Kai, our guy, my guy, your guy, our guy, Kai Forbath. So now we're up 10. I'm feeling really good about the prospects of winning this football game because you're up 10 and there's uh, less than 10 minutes to go in the football game. Chargers haven't scored in the second half. Defense doing a great job of slowing down this Phillip Rivers-led San Diego Chargers attack. I'm feeling good about it. I feel like we're one more score away from putting this game out of reach. And here's the play that I thought changed the game and almost cost us the game. Danny Woodhead fumbles 
on the play. And initially, I thought it was he was down when it happened real time. But I saw D'Angelo pick up the ball and, and like, hey, I got the ball, I got the ball. And so I said, let me see that again. Let me see that again before they run another play. And sure enough, I saw the replay. And again, there wasn't any absolute irrefutable evidence that it was a fumble, which I think in the end caused them to stay with the call on the field. But I tell you what, I saw enough on this play to make me feel like it was a fumble. Woodhead never really had any part of his body on the ground. The first thing that really hit looked like his butt. The ball was out. You can see the ball out and peeking out through his elbow before the butt landed. Then the knee came down. So I thought there was enough evidence there to call that and overturn it and make it a fumble. And I thought it was a clear recovery by D'Angelo Hall. We should have had the football. I felt like we were robbed on that play. I, I was fully expecting him to come out of the booth, tell us, because it took him a long time. And anytime it takes them a long time, you start to feel really good about the play being overturned. And so I thought he was going to come out of the booth tell us that it's Redskins ball at about the 27-yard line, prime field position. You go in, you get a touchdown. Even if you don't get a touchdown, you get a field goal. You're up by 13. That's two touchdowns. We got this football game. And you're going to eat up some more clock. And so I just felt like the game was over at this point. He comes out. He tells me something that I don't want to hear, which is the call stands as it is called on the field. Chargers retain possession. Then we get a personal foul on a horse collar. Now San Diego's in field goal range. And the whole time I'm thinking, okay, they're going to get a field goal now. And now all they'll need is a touchdown. So I'm thinking ahead. I'm thinking, okay, now they're in field goal range. Nick Novak will put this through. It'll be 24 to 17. We got to keep Phillip Rivers and company out of the end zone from tying this football game up. If we can't sustain offense, eat up the clock, and, and win this football game or go get another field goal of our own or a touchdown, we got to sustain offense, keep the ball away. If we can't, Phillip Rivers is going to have a chance to tie this game up. That's what I thought. But the Chargers had something else in mind. And that was scoring a touchdown instead of kicking a field goal. Keenan Allen gets the football in the end zone, wide open, runs a beautiful double move, has a hesitation and go. He fakes the slant. And, you know, our boy D.A., our rook, had a pick. And he got greedy now. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm feeling it. And he was ready to jump something. And, and Keenan Allen, they talked about it during the telecast. These are buddies that go way back. They, they know, and everyone around the league knows, there's a knock on D.A. And he's, he's nosy. And anytime you're nosy, you're susceptible to the double move. And, and after the pick, he was greedy. He wanted more. And, and they knew that, and they used that aggressiveness against him. Keenan runs that stutter and go. And he looked like he was going to the slant. And D.A., boy, ah, he, boy, you bit on that slant. And Keenan ran a slant and go. He ran the sluggo. Got in the end zone. Wide open. Phillip lost it to him. Catches it in the end zone. It's 21 to 14. Uh, excuse me. It's 24 to 21 now. We're up by a field goal. So now we're clinging to a three-point lead. At this point, we need to get the football back. Sustain offense. You got one or two options if you want to win this football game. Option number one, run the clock out. Chargers don't see the football again. Take knees, win the football game. That's what we would have done last year option two go down the field get more points put this game out of reach we chose to go with option three which is option c none of the above punt the football give it back to philip rivers give him a chance to beat us in regulation or send it to overtime so 26 yards to pierre garcon on first down i'm feeling good i'm like okay this is what i'm talking about fellas let's go get these points back all right then holding on chris chester after the first down, which puts us in a very precarious situation. Now it's first and 20. Ugh. You look, we can pick it up. But, and we've been getting chunks this game. So it's doable. But, man, at this juncture of the game, you want to keep the clock running. You want to be able to run the football. You want the Chargers to have to think about burning some timeouts. You can't do that if it's first and 20. You got to take to the air. And if you start incompleting passes, you're playing right into the Chargers' hands. So, Garcon, with another ridiculous catch, sets up third and short. And, and Robert was off on this throw. Pierre was going up the field. Robert throws it low and behind him. Pierre slides down to the ground, catches it with one arm. I don't know how the hell Pierre did it, but this is what you get from Pierre Garcon. You get the incredible catch, and then you get the, the occasional lackadaisical drop. 
But you have to be willing to take those lackadaisical drops because you get plays like the one we had at Denver last week where he goes over with one hand. Remember he did that to us when he was with Indy and LeRon Landry was coming over. He thought he had a pick. He went to go pick it off. And he goes up and stretches with one arm. He did it again against Denver. And so you'll get one of those or you'll get all the acrobatic catches that he had in this game. Pierre was – he had it on tilt. He was monstrous in this game was Pierre Garçon. When we needed a big play, we got a big play. Obviously, with Pierre doing what he did, the passing game doesn't suck when Pierre is doing what he did in this game. So that catch went for 17, sets up third and three. And so now we're in a prime position to pick up this first down. We get this first down. The Chargers are going to be in some trouble because now they're going to have to start using their timeout. Now we can start to work on the clock. Go to the two-minute warning, and then if they get the football back, they're not only going to have to drive the length of the field because we're moving the ball and we're going to punt and pin them deep. Then they're going to have to do it without the aid of any timeouts, and there'll be a little bit to, uh, of clock left because we'll have a chance to run off some precious time. So this was a huge third down. This could be for the ball game, essentially. Terrible throw by Robert. And I don't know if he saw the defender... And look, if he puts this on the outside shoulder, I think Pierre's got a chance to catch it and pick up the first down. So I'm not buying the whole notion that, oh, he saw the defender, thought he could jump in and airmailed it. No. If you feel that way, tuck it and run. Run! Don't throw it away. Don't airmail it 10 yards out of bounds. Run! At least you keep the clock going, if nothing else. So I don't buy that. I think he just threw a bad pass and got away from him. And that was frustrating. That one really hurt because we had a chance to put this game on ice and really put the pressure on the Chargers instead. They still got a full complement of timeouts, essentially. I think they had two at the time. And they got enough time to do whatever it is they want to do. They don't have to rush. They can still run the football. There's plenty of time left in this football game. So now we've put our defense in a very, very tough spot. Now we got to find a way to get a stop and secure this victory. So here we go. Final drive. Let's see what this defense can do. They've done a great job all game long. But you see, they're starting to wear down. Rivers is starting to get comfortable. That last possession, they made it look easy. Uh, about eight plays, 61 yards, you know, less than three minutes. So Phillip is starting to pick it up. And you know Phillip Rivers has been clutched this year at the end of ball games. Ask Philadelphia how that worked out for them. So I don't, I don't want to find ourselves in that kind of predicament. Here we go. Rivers to Royal for 20 yards. Woodhead from Rivers, 8 yards. Then Keenan Allen for 24. And after that, we were able to get a couple of stops, set up third and two from about the 47-yard line. And everybody was looking for Gates on this play. I can't blame him. I can't say that I blame him. But look, at some point, you got to realize that you have a responsibility. Here's the rook again. David Emerson, DA, being nosy. Everybody came up on Gates. And this was brilliant on the part of Ken Wisenhunt. He sends Gates on a three-yard curl, which is going to net you a first down if you pick it up. And on the play, Gates curls up. There's three Redskins defenders surrounding Antonio Gates. Nobody goes with Keenan Allen on the goal route. He's wide open. And Phillip Rivers lays this out in front of him so that he can run under it. He might run and score. I mean, there was not a Redskins defender in sight. Phillip tried to be cute and, and not overthrow it. And he, he, he left it short, and Keenan had to stop, dive down on the ground for it, which really took away the element of the catch and run. So we, got, we caught a break because we had a defensive breakdown and a, a lapse in, in coverage, and it could have cost us huge in this game. Instead, Phillip Rivers didn't want to overshoot him. He tried to throw the perfect pass, short-armed it, and we caught a break because we really dropped the ball on that one. So they pick up the first down. And after they picked up that first down, Allen, Rivers to Allen, Rivers to Allen, Rivers to Allen. Who the hell is checking this guy? Okay? Keenan Allen, eight grabs, over 100 yards in this game. Who is supposed to be guarding this guy? D.A. is supposed to be on this guy, and he was abusing D.A. late in this game. It, whether it was man or zone, it didn't matter. Keenan Allen was open. He's a technician. This is what he does, and he was carving us up. So he puts them in a position to really forget about the field goal. They've already gotten in the field goal range after Allen has shredded us on this drive. 
They're being greedy now. They still got two timeouts. About 40 seconds. They can get in the end zone now. Phillip Rivers, we got a chance to sack them. And they were holding us on this play, but they hadn't called holding all game, so don't look for it now. He gets away from the pressure. And again, this is another one of these excruciating situations where you see Phillip Rivers and you're like, somebody sack this guy, please. It's Phillip Rivers, for God's sakes. He gets away, picks up nine yards, and gets out of bounds. What in the heck? So now it's second and one. And we're protecting the end zone. They're at the seven-yard line. Danny Woodhead runs a three-yard curl route. He hooks up, and everybody on our defense is playing zone, and they're playing at the goal line. And I'm like, somebody run up on Woodhead. Phillip Rivers gets it to him quickly. Woodhead veers for the pylon. He dives. He's in the air. We hit him. I don't know if we stop him or not. I'm not sure. On, on real time, I, I'm thinking he got in. Game over. At this point, I'm so mad. I'm, I'm foaming at the mouth, you know, because I see this happening. And last year, we, we get a stop here. Last year, we find a way. Remember the Philadelphia Eagles game in Philadelphia? Eagles drive down the field late in the game. Nicholas Foles had opportunities to beat us. We find a way to get the stop. We win the football game. Last year, we find a way to get a stop. This year, things aren't going our way, and this is what happens. Woodhead in the end zone. We lose. They call it a touchdown. They show the replay. There's no doubt he didn't get in. But at this point, I'm thinking whether he gets in or he doesn't, doesn't matter. They got two timeouts. It's first and goal from the half-yard line, even if they decide to overturn it. They're going to get in the end zone. We lost the game. I'll give you a quick story, and then we'll move on. My wife asked me at the time because I'm going off in the living room. I'm going to ah! I'm going off. I'm going nuts in the living room. And my wife said, did you guys win? And I'm like, no, we lost. And the game's not over. The referee's under the booth. They haven't confirmed the touchdown yet. We haven't lost anything. But in my mind, no way we're stopping these guys four times if they decide to go for it three times to make them force a, a field goal attempt to go to overtime. No way we're stopping these guys from the half-yard line. We're talking about a quarterback sneak here. Beats you, essentially. We're talking about Ryan Matthews getting one carry and diving over the top. Beats you. We're talking about the Chargers simply needing half of the football to get in the end zone or excuse me two footballs worth of yardage to get into the end zone and so no way even if they come back and say that it's not a touchdown they're just prolonging the inevitable and so they come back it's not a touchdown which gives us hope but i'm still i'm i'm still distraught because i feel like we've blown an opportunity and i'm still thinking about the woodhead fumble that wasn't overturned I'm going back to some stuff that we can't even control at this point. I'm finding people to point the blame at. The game's not even over, and I'm pointing the blame at the officials, and I'm finding ways to rationalize this loss in my head because I can't believe it. I'm not ready, and this was the thing that I had told myself. I told my wife. I told anybody that would listen. I'm not ready to watch the Redskins play meaningless football. It's too early in the season for that. It's too early for the games to not matter. And so we lose this game. I already told you. We lose this game. Our season's over. And... You go to two and six, it's done. And so now it's first and goal from the half yard line for our season. That's what this meant. Our season is on the line. And so what I had to do was press the reset button and realize that the game's not over and we got a shot. So here we go. Our season on the line. First down, they decide to run Danny Woodhead. I don't know why Danny Woodhead doesn't scare you. He's not a powerful guy. Put Ryan Matthews in the game, see if he can get in the end zone. They decide to run Danny Woodhead. We stop him, and they lose about a yard. So great. Now it's second and goal from about the one, one and a half yard line. They spread us out, and I'm looking for the draw is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for them to sneak attack us with Woodhead, try to get up the middle, and they decide to throw a pass. Great. Incomplete. Okay, third down. We got a shot. Now I'm banging the floor. Let's go, fellas. Let's get this stop. Force overtime. Now I'm hyped because – I, I can see overtime in front of us. If we can just get it to overtime and win the toss, we can win this football game. So now my whole frame of mind has switched up. Now we can actually get this stop. The Chargers have blown it because at, at this point, I don't think you can run the football now. You still got two timeouts. You can do whatever you like. You can do whatever you like. Yeah. But at this point, if you've thrown it on second and down, you're probably going to throw it on third down as well. So they spread us out again. And, and all I could think of was do not let Gates or Woodhead beat you. Don't let Keenan Allen get free. If Antonio or if Vincent Brown is going to get us, so be it. 
Don't let it be Gates, Woodhead, or Allen. And they do a rollout. They do a QB waggle. He gets outside him like somebody go after Phillip Rivers. Make him make a decision. The longer he has, somebody's going to come open. We finally send the guy at him. He throws it to the back of the end zone. I was hoping we could pick it off and end the game. But it's incomplete. Allen dives, makes a feeble attempt at the football. It's not close. Yes! We made the stop. So now they got to kick a field goal. I don't think they're in any position to go for it on fourth down. Got to come away with something and force overtime if you are the Chargers. So they kick the field goal. We go to overtime. They explain the rules. They flip the coin. I thought they were going to win the toss because I'm a tails never fails guy. They went with heads, and I said, okay, they just lost. Tails never fails. That's how I was brought up. He goes with heads. It's tails. We win the toss. We got the football. At this point, I'm thinking, we got to score a touchdown. No way can we give the ball back to Phillip Rivers. This man is piping hot. This offense, the last two times they've had it, moved the football right down the field and, and had opportunities to score. So if we get a field goal, they get a chance to beat us with a touchdown. If we don't get anything, all they got to do is get a field goal and they beat us. No doubt that they can move the football down the field and, and get a field goal. So we got to score. And we need to really get a touchdown to end this thing. So now we find ourselves in overtime. And we get the ball first. Hankerson for nine gets us off to a great start. AM for three gets us a first down on second and one. Then AM rips off a 24-yard run. So now I'm starting to think, let's go. We can do this. We got this. Let's get it. Third and eight. And this is a huge play in the game because we don't pick this up. We get nothing. They get the football. We could be in some trouble. Jay Ree comes up. Huge with a big play, big conversion for 11 on 38. We had to have it. We had to have it. And so he was, he was so huge on that play. Hadn't really called his name too many times in the game. Pierre Garçon was, was the man in this game. Speaking of which, Garçon with a grown man grab for 21 after Holden made it first and 20. Tack on a bogus personal foul. That was not a good call. That was not personal foul. We had no business getting 15 extra yards on top of that Garcon 21-yard gain. And so uh, we caught a break there. That, that, I, I didn't want that. But, you know, I'm not going to turn it down. But we didn't need that 15-yard gain. That wasn't personal foul on, on the Chargers. We got away with one there. And maybe that was the football guys making it right for that Woodhead uh, lack of reversal on that fumble think that's the football guys just evening it out the playing field and making it right. But we weren't supposed to get that personal foul. That wasn't a good call at all. But Garcon, what can I say about Pierre? Seven catches, 172 yards. The guy was absolutely phenomenal in this game. Without Pierre Garcon, there's no Redskins victory in this game. He was huge. Every single catch you could imagine. One hand on the ground. It, this one was in traffic. Grown man grab. Robert threads the needle. You can't throw it any better than that. I mean, an absolute dart in traffic. He gets a shot, holds on to the football. And again, it was first and 20, so we needed it. And he went out and got it. So that sets us up about 13 yards away from the end zone. AM runs for nine, sets up second and one. And really, that was about a 10-yard, maybe even an 11-yard run. I don't know what the officials were doing there. But I was actually happy that they set it up as a second and one because now that gave us a chance to pick up one yard, get a first down, and give you four opportunities because I feel like you got to go for it at this point and score a touchdown. Four opportunities to get in the end zone after you pick up the first down. So I wasn't even mad. But then I was starting to rethink that decision because on second and one, we were stopped. Now it's third and one. Heck, if you give me the first down, it's only second down now. Instead, it's third and one. Now you're starting to think, what if we don't pick this up? Mike's got a decision to make, and I think it's not even a decision to make. You go for it on fourth down and, and try to win this game. Now you can't give the football to Phillip Rivers and expect him not to try to go down and stick a dagger through our heart. So you got to go for it if we don't pick it up. Hey, just like earlier in the game, no need to even think about what you have to do on fourth down. Third and one, Darrell Young, D.Y., picks up four yards and a touchdown. Game over, game set match, 30-28, to 28, Redskins victory. We had to have it. I am going absolutely bananas in the living room. I tell the Chargers, get out of my house. Man, they played a heck of a game. They played a heck of a ball game. They scared me half to death because, again, 
I'm not ready for meaningless football in November. I don't know about you. November's just getting started. We still got all of November. We still got all of December. I'm not ready for meaningless football. This is our division. And in order to win three in a row, we got to win one first. And we had to have this one. And we got it. That goal line stand was for the season. They salvaged the season. And we got it done in overtime. We got the win. And it was a huge victory. Great game by the Chargers. But we, we had to have this one. We were against the wall. Our backs were against the wall. And we didn't have anything to lose. And we found a way to get it done at home. Big performance from everybody involved. And we got it done. I can't state that enough. We got it done. We needed this one. We had to have it. So now, that's one. We need three in a row. And I said that we were going to win this game. And we did that. That's phase one of a three-step process on our road back to recovery, on our road back to 500. And so that's step one of the process. Now we got a Thursday night matchup at Minnesota. Going to be a huge matchup. I'll be back to break that down on Wednesday. I'm going to get out of here now. It's been a long episode. I am a Redskins fan, etched in burgundy and gold. My Redskins spirit will never die. My Redskins spirit will never fold. Until we meet again, hail to the Redskins. Woo! What a dramatic victory. We had to have it. We got it. I'll see you on Wednesday. Victory Monday. You can put us on the board. Yeah! With three and five. Minnesota Vikings, here we come. They're the next obstacle in the way of us getting back to 500. See you on Wednesday when we break down the Minnesota Vikings.